Good afternoon. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Evening Prayer for Tuesday, March 22nd. It's the third week in Lent, and week five in our psalm cycle. And please join me. O oh God, come to my assistance. Make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. How often they provoked you in the wilderness and grieved you in the desert. Psalm 78, and please recite it with me. How often they provoked you in the wilderness and grieved you in the desert. They turned back and tempted you and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember your strength, nor the day when you delivered them from the enemy, how you had wrought signs in Egypt and wonders in the field of Zoan. You turned their rivers into blood that they could not drink. You sent all sorts of flies among them which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. You also gave their crops to the caterpillar, and their labor to the locust. You destroyed their vines with hail, and their sycamores with frost. You gave up their cattle to the hail, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. You cast on them the fierceness of your anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending a troop of evil angels among them. You gave free course to your anger and did not spare their lives from death, but gave them over to pestilence. You struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, the finest flower in the tabernacles of Ham, but made your own people go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And you led them in safety so that they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And you brought them to the border of your holy land, even to this mountain, which your right hand had purchased. You cast out the heathen before them and divided the land for their inheritance and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Amen. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. How often they provoked you in the wilderness and grieved you in the desert. Amen. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, beginning at verse 32. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman and the virgin are anxious about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his fiancée, if his passions are strong, and so it has to be, let him marry as he wishes. It is no sin. Let them marry. But if, anyone, if someone stands firm in his resolve, being under no necessity, but having his own desire under control, and has determined in his own mind to keep her as his fiancée, he will do well. So then, he who marries his fiancée does well, and who, he who refrains from marriage will do better. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord. But in my judgment, she is more blessed if she remains as she is, and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. Here ends the lesson. They tempted you and provoked you and did not keep your commandments. Amen. Psalm 78, and please recite it with me. Yet they tempted and provoked you and did not keep your commandments, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their forebears. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. They angered you with their mountain shrines and made you jealous with their graven images. When you heard this, you were furious and greatly abhorred Israel. So you forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent where you lived among your people, and delivered your ark into captivity, your glorious ark, into the enemy's hand. You gave your people over to the sword, 
furious with your inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, and there were no weddings for their maidens. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then you awoke as one out of a deep sleep, like a mighty warrior overcome by wine. You struck the enemy from behind and put them to perpetual shame. You rejected the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which you loved. And you built your sanctuary like the heavens, like the earth, which you established forever. You chose David, your servant, and you took him from the sheepfolds, from following the sheep great with young. You brought him to shepherd the people of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, and Israel, your inheritance. So David fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skill of his hands. Amen. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. They tempted you and provoked you and did not keep your commandments. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Here ends the lesson. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. In you shall we lie down in peace and sleep, for only you make us dwell in safety. Make us a righteous nation that keeps your truth, that we may glory in your judgment. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations, let not the needy be always forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. For the intentions of those who have asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Guide us to your eternal dominion, O Shepherd of Israel, for only in you can we live in safety. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.